Okay, now we go to the test for the fetal distress. So again, fetal distress is the stress of the baby. So it's not normal to have the fetal distress. We have here the reason for the fetal distress. The first one, we have here the HDN or hemolytic disease of the newborn. Hemolytic disease of the newborn may be related to your ABO incompatibility or RH blood group incompatibility. And to say, pag ABO, so the mother and the father or the mother versus the baby, they are not compatible with their ABO blood group. Or you could also have here the RH incompatibility wherein the mother and the baby is also in not incompatible, not compatible with their RH blood group. So between the two, ABO is the most common type of your HDN. But then again, RH is the most severe one because this is an IgG antibody, can cross the placenta. Whereas antibody in your ABO could not cross the placenta. Okay, taking for example here your RH HDN. So during the first pregnancy, the mother is RHD antigen negative. And then the baby is RHD positive. So the RHD positive of the baby came from the RH me father. So because of that, since negative ang mother for the RHD during the first pregnancy, the mother will be exposed to the RHD antigen. And what we're going to happen here, the mother will be sensitized. And finally, and eventually, the mother we're going to develop here antibody, anti-RHD antibody. Kasi yung una wala siyang kanyang antigen, so therefore mag-develop siya ng antigen kasi na-expose siya. And here comes the second pregnancy. In the first pregnancy, HDN will not occur. It will only occur here on the second pregnancy where the mother has already the antibody in the form of anti-RHD antibody. And here it comes again here, the baby, and the second pregnancy is RHD positive. At ito ngayon, si mother meron siyang anti-RHD, so magkakaroon ng magbabind itong antibody ni mother, anti-RHD antibody to the RHD positive red cell ni baby. And magkakaroon ng antigen antibody complex, and that would result here to the destruction of your red cells. Magkakarapture siya, mediated by your complement. And because of that, so... Increased red cell destruction that would eventually result here to your increased bilirubin production. Because remember that your bilirubin is a breakdown product of your hemoglobin. So we have here the test. So for assessment of the fetal distress related to your hemolytic disease in the newborn, we can test that one by testing your bilirubin concentration. So here in bilirubin termination, we try to measure the bilirubin concentration at a wavelength from 365 to 550 nanometer wavelength. Normally, pag nasa 365 wavelength ang bilirubin natin, medyo mataas ang kanyang absorbance. So, pag 550, mababa, maging mababa ang kanyang absorbance reading. Okay, so, your bilirubin is in between this one, 365 to dito siya, 450. So, normally, dapat bilirubin natin mababa pag wala kang red sa destruction. Pero pag, for example, madami kang bilirubin because of increased rise of destruction in the case of your H, uh, RHHDN, so pag, pagdating niya dito, instead na pagbaba siya, tataas siya dito. Okay, so tataas siya dito. Why tumaas siya is because na ta sobrang taas ng bilirubin niya. This is, a, this is the 450 nanometer. This is the maximum absorbance of your bilirubin. So tataas siya. Pagdating dyan, normally dapat pababa. Tataas siya because, again, the baby would have already here increased red cell destruction that would result here to increase bilirubin concentration. Okay, you could have interference for this one if, for example, your, uh, your specimen has been contaminated with the blood because your oxymoglobin have an absorbance reading at 410 nanometer wavelength. Medyo malapit siya sa dito, sa 450. So, kung may blood, ang specimen natin, expect na mag-increase siya ang absorbance reading, but that is a false positive result because, again, we're just only after sign ng bilirubin concentration. Pero, since na-contaminate siya ng blood natin, it could increase also on that. So, what we're going to do here is that, okay, may measure mo ka absorbance reading dito versus your normal na graph. And you take the difference of that to become your OD difference at 450 nanometer wavelength. So, there's a difference here in the absorbance reading at 450 nanometer wavelength, wavelength with your theor theoretical baseline or the normal baseline versus your 
um, OD at 450 nanometer wavelength for your specimen, for your specimen that would have contained stereobilirubin. So take the difference of that, and then what you're going to do with the difference to try to plot it in your Lyly graph. Your Lyly graph would look like this one. So dito na side na to, dito makikita ang ating this one. Optical density difference at 450, then itong A of your station. And then try to plot here in the Lyly graph and you can derive your information. Information like what? So your Lyly graph divided here into three zones. Zone 1, kung sa zone 1 siya magfall ang, ang graph mo, it will signify that you have a mildly affected na fetus of your um, hemolytic disease of the newborn. Pag sa zone 2 na siya, so medyo okay, it requires careful monitoring na siya. And pag sa zone 3 na siya, so it requires already an intervention kasi sobrang severely affected ang baby, pwede na siyang mamatay. So, you can have intervention pag nasa zone 3 na ang difference ng pag mo, ng kanilang difference, optical density difference at 450. What inter interference or what intervention are you going to, to provide here as your management because the baby is severely affected with your bilirubin, high-level bilirubin or HDN? So, you can give your intrauterine exchange transfusion, then bibigyan mo siya ng blood, or you could also have your deliver mga baby, even if the baby is premature. But make sure, if you try to deliver the baby premature, make sure na kaya ng baby by checking the lung, fetal lung maturity. Okay, then we have also here the test for your neural tube defects. Okay, so neural tube defects, example for that, we have your spina bifida, and we have also here anencephaly. So this is a condition we're in, the skin fails to close, and therefore, um, we're able to have your high level of the alpha fetoprotein. So test for your neural defects, or okay, what you are needing here would be testing for the level of your alpha fetoprotein. Okay, alpha fetoprotein is being produced by our liver on the 12, between 12 to 15 weeks age of gestation. And after 15 weeks, dapat bumababa na ang level ng alpha fetoprotein natin. So, let's say, for example, after 15 weeks, ang alpha fetoprotein level ng baby is more than, uh, it's mataas pa rin siya after 15 weeks, so it will signify a neural tube defects. Okay, when you're testing for your alpha fetoprotein, the unit of that is MOM, or multiples of median. Pag sinabing median, it's the laboratory... It's the reference values for each of the laboratory. Mas nabi lang, for example, itong lab, ang kanyang reference value is 40, itong sa isa 50, so iba-iba ang kanilang reference values. So, it, you need to consider here what is the reference value of that laboratory. So, we consider here increase alpha beta protein if the level of your MOM is two times the normal reference range set by that laboratory. Okay, then we have here also, okay, for the testing of your neural tube defects, you could also have here your acetylcholinesterase. So, acetylcholinesterase also tests for your neural tube defects, but this one is much more specific compared to your alpha beta protein, only that your acetylcholinesterase is being affected here by the blood in a specimen. So, pag blood in a specimen, then eventually it would try to have a false result for that. Okay, the next one, we have here your okay, fetal lung maturity. Okay, the fetal lung maturity could be assessed here by, by the different tests. Okay, so we have a problem with your fetal lung. So we have that so-called here fetal distress related to your fetal lung maturity or immaturity. So, death sometimes related here to your respiratory distress syndrome. Namamatay ang baby, yung to say, hindi ganun kamature ang lungs niya, this respiratory distress syndrome. Namamatay siya because nagko-collapse ang kanyang alveoli of the lungs because wala siyang pulmonary surfactants. Your surfactants, its main function is to provide your surface tension necessary for allowing your alveoli of the lungs here to keep open throughout your inhalation exhalation process. Again, your surfactants also try to prevent the collapse of your lungs by reducing the surface tension 
allowing that one then to uh, allow the lungs here to take up more air easily. So again, to check here if the lungs is mature or not, you need to measure the concentration of your pulmonary surfactants, which are your phospholipids. Okay, so we have here the test for your fetal lung maturity. So if we you know here, again, if the lungs is already mature, you can deliver the baby prematurely. So it would not, it will keep the baby alive and it collapse ang lungs niya. So to check here if the lungs of the baby is already mature, is already mature, then measure here the phospholipid, phospholipid concentration. So one of the tests here for the fetal lung maturity measurement, we have here your LS or your lecithin sphingomyelin ratio. Lecithin sphingomyelin are phospholipids. So for example, of our phospholipids. For the lecithin, lecithin here, the concentration of this one, for this one is being produced here, Basically, on the 35 weeks age of gestation, so prior to 35 weeks, lecithin concentration is less than, okay, is mababa ang kanyang, decrease ang kanyang level. Your sphingomyelin, on the other hand, serve here as your internal standard, and the concentration of that one try to increase on the 26 age of gestation. So, you take the ratio of the LS, lecithin, sphingomyelin, if the ratio is less than 2, it would signify that the age of your station is less than 35 weeks. But, like for example, if the LS ratio is more than 2, and it would signify that the age of the station is more than 35 weeks, it would signify already that uh, the baby's lungs is already mature, so fetal lung maturity siya. Pag fetal lung maturity, so safe na i-deliver ang baby, even that one is your even a baby is very mature, kakayanin ng lungs niya kasi mature na siya, and therefore makaka-survive ang baby. Okay, the method here for your LS ratio, we have your TLC, thin layer chromatography. Okay, so this is a quantitative determination. Okay, the problem with this one, this is um, interfered. If your specimen has been contaminated with the blood or even the meconium, it might affect the test. Another one, we have your amniostat FLM. So, in this test, this is another instrumentation. Or in this test, you are testing for another phospholipid na in the form of your phosphatidylglycerol. So, phosphatidylglycerol, just like your lecithin sphingomyelin, are also phospholipids. So, you measure the phospholipid, phosphatidylglycerol here by the instrument amniostat FLM. It's, this is an agglutination test. Okay, so what's the good about this one compared with your LS ratio? This one is not affected by the blood and even by your meconium because this is an agglutination test.